the Super Speedway. On the wall, up top, three back, the six. Still down there. Ooh. Ooh. Ran over us twice. The last four laps. Did I miss something there? Or no? I've not seen it yet. Just bring it to us if we can fix this piece of shit. Got no break. Got no break. Just shit. The rotor is probably fucking broke. Look at the right front rotor and see if it's broke. Okay. Take it to the garage. Welcome to episode 281 of the Super Speedway Podcast, recorded Tuesday, May 30th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Young, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, James Cush, who may very well fire me at this moment. I'm <laughs> so frustrated right now. I am with Chase Elliott's crew. We need to take it to the garage, James. Oh, man. The podcast <sighs> did go to the garage, but we're back. We're, we're, we're a few laps down, <sighs> but we're making laps. We're learning on the, we're learning on the fly here. As you, um, as you guys are listening to this, we have already done half of the podcast tonight, um, but it's the dumbass who runs the, the equipment over here that changes things every week, um, that would be me, did not hit record on the recorder. And I, you know, the well, funniest thing, James, is you know how many times I've looked over at it to look at the levels and didn't notice that the red light wasn't on. Oh man. Well, you know what? Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll bang this thing out in less than an hour. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to find out. I know. I'm starting to debate, like how much do we go back through the stuff we already, cause it's not going to be genuine when the way we go back through it. Yeah. So. Let's make it, let's make it happen. Maybe we I, can. Yeah. Do you want to, you know wanna... what, Eric, I'm going to, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Yeah. I fake it like 99% of the time anyway. I can do this. I, I got you, man. I'll carry you. I'll My carry God. you through. I'll let you in on a little secret. I am a terrible actor, so there is no way I can repeat what I've already done. If oh, it's baby. not genuine, it it you can tell it's not genuine. So Well, let's let's see what we can do. Fire it up. Where do you want to start? My let's, God. let's hit it. Well, let's hit it. I don't remember what all stuff we talked about before we got at the Coca-Cola 600. So we'll just talk about the Coca-Cola 600, James. <laughs> let's do it. Oh, my God. This is this is going to be such deja vu. Now with the whole podcast, I'm going to be going, did I already say that? Listen, here here's the order of events. Let's just see if we can run run through it, and yeah. then we'll, we'll we'll divulge. Yeah. So we got, we got through talking about Blaney. Yes. We decided we needed to run the Coke 600 on a Monday every year. We yes. talked about that. Yes, we we had a good conversation about Tony Stewart, which I usually <laughs> do every right. every week. I gave credit we, to the Fox broadcast for being a great broadcast as well and as we the were broadcast just both, the 500. Yep, and we were just extremely outraged over Chase Elliott. We finally yes. got to that point, and yes. now we are here starting it over. Well, you know so, what? Since we've already done do this and we're already heated about the Chase Elliott thing, let's, let's start, start there. there. Um, and then we'll go back to Blaney. So those of you listening to this, we did not bury the lead. We did start with Blaney as the winner. Um, unfortunately, we didn't record it. So let's talk about Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin, because that's where we left off. Yes, uh, sir. That none of you guys got to hear. Um, as we already recorded, and or, well, as we already said, but didn't record, uh, Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin get together, coming off a of turn four. Hamlin runs Elliott wide. Chase right hooks Denny, puts him in the wall, and earns himself a one-week vacation from NASCAR as a result and James and I both agree that there was nothing else NASCAR could do here in this situation. Hands are tied. Yes, yeah. sir. Hands are tied. You, uh, we, we saw it with the Bubba Wallace incident last year at Kansas and saw it here again. Um, it's, it's unacceptable, man. It's just not, you know, I know, I know what Chase Elliott means to the sport as yeah. the most popular driver and this has been a tough year and all the, these things. But, Eric, you were clear on this, and I'll reiterate what you said. Um, if it's not clear now, it better be going forward. Yeah. Because yeah, the, this, pre the this, precedent this is, is definitely done. set. You know yep. if you're going to right hook somebody on the straightaway or anywhere, you're going to get you're going to get sat. Um, yep. and, and I think I said, you know, the left hook gets you points. The left hook gets you points fine. Points and money. Yep. Points and money. But the right hook gets you sat. And that, I mean, James, I I know I'm not a big fan because I do like, I like the controversy. I don't want to see people wreck each other on purpose. But at the same time, you know, I'm here for the chaos too. But 
I think this is the right thing to do. I don't think this is being, this isn't, this isn't filing, finding Dale Jr. for saying the S word in victory lane after a race. This is something, this is a penalty that needs to be done. This is dirty. And I think it's a, it's a, it's an acceptable penalty. Yep. For the situation, and I well, think I think it was pretty blatant. I think there was there was nobody yeah. at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Oh, that was my line. Nobody at Charlotte Motor Speedway or anywhere else except the Dawsonville Pool Room uh, that didn't <laughs> yeah. think that yeah. Chase Elliott did this on purpose. Yep, yep, yeah. And this is uh, you know what this is, Eric. It's dirty and dangerous. Yeah. And I mean, you know, one thing that I, I want to make sure we reiterate again here is the violence of the hit. Yeah. Because you know you know. When we saw Ryan Priest get in that wreck at Talladega from the in-car camera, and that that camera moved, this vi this the violence of this wreck at the speeds that they're going and hooking into that that dangerous dog leg. I mean, yeah. Eric, lives have been taken. Yes. in that dog leg, multiples, yes. Yes. multiples. I mean, th- that's back in our. That's a you know, really good point. I mean, that is yeah. And, and okay, so there was somebody that went really in the weeds on Twitter today. I was searching for Chase Elliott just to see if there'd been anything announced, and somebody pointed out that it was ironic that the guy who right hooked somebody was teammates with a driver who honored somebody who was killed in the same fashion Mm -hmm. previously. And I, I did, I I had to ask him the question. I said, I don't, you're, you're too far in the weeds for me. I don't understand. Blaze Alexander was wrecked here in the same fashion and died. And Jimmy Johnson ran a tribute on his car, his entire career for Blaze Alexander. His entire career. Yeah. Which I didn't know. Yes, the the skull, uh, the fiery skull on the on the left front fender. Yep. yep. So, and I, and that's I mean, it's a good point that you know this. That's I think something that's gotten away from us in this era of safety that we have mm-hmm. is how dangerous this used to be to do something like this. And it's I mean, Eric, it's dangerous now with this yeah. car. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, we're just I mean, we're just one wrong hit Mm -hmm. away from being right back where we were you know i mean i feel like we are biding our time still Um, oh yeah maybe it you know and maybe new fans don't think that way um but i think you and i live through the 90s you did yes (laughs) you and i you and i are pre you know it's like you know it's like eight you know bc and you know before christ and after christ right yeah um I mean, there's before Dale Senior and there's after Dale Senior, and you and I are of the before Dale Senior era, and we remember Davy Allison on one hot night hitting the wall yeah. right there, um, hitting his helmet against that wall and right. coming back so, somehow coming back because um, he was one tough sob. But I mean, we remember the we remember these things, man. We were there for all that stuff, yeah. and uh, I mean, gosh, we were there, you know. People love seeing Carl Edwards back at Darlington, but he had the couple of the d- dirtiest yeah. front front stretch crashes of all time. Uh, on uh, you know poor Brad Keselowski on the receiving end, and kind of ironically enough, he was front row for this one. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean it, you know, and, and I know Denny Denny's been on his soapbox doing Denny things, and <laughs> I you know it, it's irritating at times. But you know, the more I think about it, and I'm actually glad we're re-recording because. As I think more and more about it, if that were me and my life kind of flashed before my eyes in yeah. that way, or my career at least at the you know, um, yeah, I'd be pissed off too, and I'd be calling for his head on a plate as well. I mean, that's it, it's it's one of the more dirty things we've seen, and and Bubba's was Bubba's was pretty filthy too. Yeah, um, Bubba, I mean, Bubba chased Larson down. <laughs> right. Uh, this was this was pretty instantaneous, and I think. I think if we were to ask Chase Elliott in an honest moment, I think he would have said he immediately regretted it. After oh he yeah, did it. but he'll he'll never say it. But no, you know, um, here's here's the thing. Like I am, it's one thing to wreck somebody when. So if you're pissed off and you go into the next turn and you hit them in the, in the left rear and turn them around, that's one thing. You're you're still giving them a chance to save that. You're making you're sending your message, but they've got a chance to say there is no saving a right hook. I mean, there is nothing that Denny Hamlin could have done. He was wrecking in that situation. You just don't give a guy a chance. And that is just blatant, just disregard. And it needs to be penalized. And and NASCAR, I'm so happy to the right thing. I was so worried they weren't going to do the right thing. Um, they, I felt like they had to, they had to, um, and and, even when, even the chase Elliott fans are saying it, you know, 
I mean, well, the common, the ones with common sense. Yeah. There's a lot of them that don't. Um, well, what was Denny's line? Uh, some of them are sane. Most of them aren't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think of later in this race, um, one of the highlights of the late, late, late parts of this race was watching Stenhouse yeah. and Kyle Busch. And they were rough with each other. Mm -hmm. And we always joke about Ricky Spinhouse, right? Yeah. But even Ricky, even Ricky Spinhouse doesn't, you know, he he can race rough with well, Kyle Busch and race hard. Don't get me wrong. I think he was trying to spin Kyle too, but he at least was doing it on the left side. He was doing it in the left rear. And yeah. Kyle had a chance to drive out of it. And he did. And yep, they and, were both basically wrecking each other all the, yeah. on the dang track. And that you know? situation too is another one of those in my mind that, okay, Ricky took the swipe at him. He didn't get it done. And then he stopped because you yep. don't get a second chance. That's right. If you fail on the first chance, you don't get another one. That's right. Unless you're Denny Hamlin at Gateway a year ago. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> wrecking every single time. Well, that was a little much, too. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot <laughs> it of wasn't, fun, though. At least, yeah, he wasn't really wrecking him so much as he was just being obnoxious. Yes. That, yes. that was a good day. I, I like so, I like annoying Denny a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's yeah. He could be an entertainer. That's for sure. He definitely Actions. got it. We talk about we talk about Ross Chastain having his name in the headlines, but Denny's done a pretty damn good job this year. Well, Denny's always on the receiving end of everybody else's pain. Apparently, right. I, don't, I don't know. You know, we we should mention though. So what's going to happen here? So yeah. Chase Elliott's gone. Chase Elliott's gone. One yeah, week. The, the best part about this. Yes. It's totally who's getting the shot. Who's getting the shot, Yeah, James? two guys are getting a yeah, shot. Yeah, exactly. So Corey LaJoy takes over the nine car because Josh Berry's out in Portland. Uh, so Corey LaJoy gets his first legit shot with a top-tier team. Amazing. This is going to be fun. Amazing. Uh, and he, replacing him in the He's getting the Jimmy Means treatment. If you remember, Jimmy yep. Means got to drive for, for Hendrick once. Yes. This is the Jimmy I Means mean, treatment. Yeah, and you think of uh, some of the guys who've gotten – good tier rides like this is kenny wallace replacing ernie Irving. yeah um guys well, like that shoot you know, it's daryl waltrip in the one car when when steve yeah Parker's man part, he you know was really good in that one car too yeah yep so the joy gets his first real we get to really see Corey the joy and what he can do here um but also on a very exciting for you know michigan guys like ourselves uh beginning the call up to the seven car is carson hosevar so he will get his cup debut uh, this coming weekend at a, at a track where I think a year ago he kind of think he was busted up pretty good. Yeah. So uh, Carson Hosfar gets to take over the seven. So this is pretty kind. Of, you know, one bad thing happens, but we got some pretty cool stuff happening here with Corey and, and Carson coming up. So this is going to be uh, an interesting weekend. I'm kind of excited to see what Corey can do. I did. Uh, I did see a tweet today um, this afternoon. Uh, Carson Hosevar getting a cup seat because someone right reared a guy and got suspended is a level of irony I cannot handle. <laughs> um, Carson, yeah. Well, <laughs> for those for those who might be lost on that, Carson has done his share of right hooking and also got penalized for it, though he did not have to sit a week as a result. He lost You'll, three he laps, will, I yeah. think, or something like that, a couple laps. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he will now <laughs> uh, if that happens again. So don't do it again. No, right. no. Um, I no, will no. say, too, I you know, I like to give him a hard time, but uh, but I'll give credit where it's due. Um, kicking the tires had a, had a thing they put up today where they went back and over the last like three years, looked at all of the retaliation, uh, on track retaliation that's occurred. And NASCAR has been pretty consistent with the right hook. It doesn't happen very often. And only a couple times have people gotten away with it with no penalty. Um, yeah. this is only the second time they've, that we've sat a guy because of it. Um, but they, they have generally, I mean, they've generally pen penalized somewhat, uh, for a right hook over the last few years. So this is yeah, not, and the only, not unprecedented by any means. The only left hook suspension I can remember is Matt Kenseth, uh, two, two races, but he, yeah. he was, that more wasn't so a suspended. right hook. That was a, we, I came back out on the track to completely take you yes. out. And that was a championship altering yes. incident that took Joey Logano completely out of the championship. I think NASCAR sent a big message to, to the to to everybody for that one so yeah and I, I i think you could argue i could argue i have no problem had no problem with the two race suspension on that but i could also get behind a one race suspension on that too i think i don't think matt kenseth cared <laughs> right i think going back in history like if we were to if we were to adjudicate that now i think it'd be he'd be sitting for a race not two um, yeah but uh but yeah i think yeah you couldn't argue against that either. That was another one of those where you're like, yeah, he, he's not racing next week. There's no, no way he's no. racing next yeah. week. And you know, yep. you, they, these guys shouldn't put NASCAR in these situations. Don't make NASCAR make the call. 
Um, yep. Like I said, there's there's nothing NASCAR could have done. They either would have angered the majority of their fan base, or they have to have integrity. And the the only way to have integrity was to to penalize Chase and have him sit. Yep. So. Yep. NASCAR is not going to suspend you for having a scuffle on pit road no. after the race. No. You know what I mean? So. Heck, you're in most instances you're not even going to get a monetary fine for that. Yep. Yep. So, um, we already talked about this, but we didn't record it. Uh, there was also other controversy during this race. Uh, Eric Almarola and Bubba Wallace get into it as well, uh, pushing and shoving during one of the rain delays. Um, biggest thing here, I think, is just Bubba, Bubba flipped the bird again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, being Bubba, Bubba he, doing Bubba stuff. Bubba needs to put the bird away and stop flipping it. Denny said it on his podcast this week, too, um, that it's childish and just unnecessary. Um, Bubba Wallace has continued to put together good weekends, um, has had good finishes the last three weeks and can, and this is what we're talking about. So, um, yep. and finish, I mean, finish fourth in this one. We, we it talk- was really good. Yeah. And he was really good late. Um, that was the, that was the surprising thing of how, how hard he came on late. And it's tough because you want to root for Bubba. Um, but then he, you know, he's just kind of silly and, you know, I don't know if anybody, Anybody in the garage is fighting with Eric Almarola very often, right. but uh, apparently him and Bubba have some history, which is fine. Uh, that that happens, and and I think they handled it all right. But that that dang yeah. security guard, the same guy, I man, know he he's everywhere. <laughs> he's yeah. There's got to be more than one of that guy. Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool though. I was I was like I had to laugh about that. I think uh, Clint Boyer was a little yes. frustrated <laughs> as well with that. So. I, I know a lot of people don't like Clint in the booth, but I love I love Clint, period. I just think Clint is awesome. <laughs> he just, has his moments, and, you know, you and I were talking a little bit ago about how uh, how him and Tony had a really good, yeah. you know, um, just really good camaraderie in the booth and how Tony's going to, you know, feel, feels like Tony's actually going to miss this. Uh, I, I, I do think Kevin's, when Kevin Harvick comes in, I think he's going to do just fine with, with Clint. And, oh, but, yeah, I think you know, so, too. Clint's had a lot of reps now, and and I think he knows how to how to handle it up there. So he'll, yeah, he'll be fine. He's to me, he's enough goofy and enough knowledgeable. He does a good job with the analysis as well. Um, yep. I think DW got, DW got too cartoony. Um, Michael Waltrip is Michael Waltrip. I, I think that that Clint does a really good job of balancing the goofiness, and you feel like Clint is there to have a good time and help you have a good time, but not there to be the clown. You know, I guess that's the best way I can explain yep. it. And you know, I was, yeah, I was hopefully I was there in the actually. media center at Clint's last win. Um, I remember enjoying how goofy he was after that win. So, you know, I've got a little bit different perspective of it too, because of that and, and seeing him in the media center and seeing how he acts. And he's not, he's not putting out an act in the booth, man. That's, that's Clint. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. That's who he is. Just, exactly. hundred percent. He's just being Clint. So, but he's the yep. same guy that when I pulled in the park at Michigan, I think that same weekend, you know, four hours, five hours before the race was running with his shirt off, you know, putting his time <laughs> in and, you know, working out before the race. So, you know, he's still dedicated. Yep. It was dedicated too. So, uh, yep. um, so yeah, uh, Ryan Blaney gets the win here. Uh, finally wins uh, again in the Cup Series, breaks a 59 race winless streak. Um, winless streaks kind of the the theme of the weekend uh, here in the NASCAR three NASCAR series at Charlotte. Um, eighth victory for Ryan Blaney. Uh, very popular win. We saw emotion from Blaney at the end of the race. Um, you could tell yep. this one meant something for him for sure. Yeah, and, and, you know, with Ryan Blaney, you, you know, one of the things I want to make sure we go back and say yeah. is Ryan's one of the good ones. Yeah. Um, he's not everybody's favorite driver, but he ain't far down the list either. Right. He's either, you know, he's either your favorite or he's your, th- you know, up to your third favorite. Um, and, and I think the guys in the garage feel the same way. You know, um, as disappointed as we were in Bubba for, you know, doing Bubba stuff, he, he you know, he, he's happy for his friend too. Yeah. And, and there's not... I can't think of anybody in the garage who doesn't like Blaney, and, and I don't know any fans who don't like Blaney either. So, uh, popular win for sure. Uh, this was a, you know, a dominant win, but he had to earn it too, and uh, it was just an impressive race all around. I think it was a really good sign for him moving forward. Um, you know, I think for Ford too, this was a big win, and, and obviously for the for uh, for the captain, uh, getting two wins in one day. 
yeah. uh, or one weekend, I should say. Yeah, uh, first, first time, time he's ever. Done that. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, this was uh, this was a big milestone win for Ryan Blaney. He gets he gets one of the you know gets one of the marquee races here, and um, just a cool overall. Just a you know, just a feel good win, man. We don't get a lot of those very often um, anymore because I think you know, a lot of the same guys are winning races all the time. But Blaney sprinkles them in, and every time he does, it gives you some feel good. Yeah, and he it, he always seems like he's on the cusp. Like you're never surprised when he gets it gets it together and gets the win. Um, I feel like his entire career has been well. He's gonna get it. He's gonna get yeah. that win. You know, we've we've always yeah. been like that with Blaine. We were like that when he was in the twenty one car. We've yep. been like that since he's come over to Penske. He won't and... give this one away. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But, but yeah, you know, and and that's funny too. It's uh, you know we we chatted a little bit earlier about how William Byron uh, in that pit stall. Yeah. We thought for sure uh, Byron might steal this thing because of how dominant that team is and how how good that pit stall selection was for them. Um, but you know, Blaney was really consistent, really good. He hooks the bottom, uh, gets the break on the caution flag and, and that's all she wrote, man. He, he was able to get his lane choice and he was gone from there. Um, not much. And, you know, and, you know, too, when you're beating that 24 car this year, yeah. um, you're, you're beating, you're beating probably the cream of the crop right now. Well, I mean, he's that, doing an afford, which the Fords have struggled too, you know? Yes. Yeah. He went toe to toe with, with Byron and Larson, uh, before Larson spun, and then obviously, uh, you know, some of the Toyotas were really good. I, you know, twenty three eleven was up there. Martin Truex was up there. So, uh, yeah, this was a this was a well this is a well earned victory, man. He had to, he had to go get it. So it was, that was a really good sign for him moving forward. Last year, this race was arguably one of, if not the best race of the season. Uh, we crowned Kansas with that uh, a couple of weeks ago. Do you, yeah. Was this, I mean, I thought this was a pretty damn good race for a 600 miler. It was for a 600 miler that was held on Monday. It was very intriguing to me. I really enjoyed it. I didn't feel like I was bored at any point during the race. Does, did we match Kansas? Did we match last year's 600? Um, what do you think of what we got here? I'd say we're probably the next step down. Yeah, I think, we're I think so. Right there. Yeah. yeah, we're right there, but not quite, not quite there, but this was good. This is a good day. So, uh, Dale Jr., what, is, what did Dale Jr. have to say? Yeah, Dale Jr. tweeted out that, you know, with the 1.5-mile package being as good as it is, do we put the Roval on ice uh, for a couple of years? Which uh, I, I know was your funny... opinion on it. I, well, really? I like the I like the Roval, but I hadn't thought of it. So yeah. I, kind of, I kind of agree with Dale Jr., but I, I don't have any problems with the Roval, but um, I disagree. Pretty good racing, man. This is good racing. The reason I disagree with Dale Jr. is that I still stand by that if you're going to have two races at track, you better have something different. Yes. You know, that's true. A- unless yep. you're Daytona or Talladega, in my opinion, you can a super speedway can get away with it, even though now that we got six with Atlanta, I'm starting to question that a little bit, too. But yep. there, there, there needs to be something different, and I don't think a uh, think two hundred miles less is enough different to justify racing twice here uh, on the oval. Um, and I do, yeah. I like the Roval too. I think the Roval is really, um, I, I think it's not as good right now with this car. But I think, I think the Roval may have been one of the best road course races we had last year, despite this car. Um, yep. So I think it puts on a good show, and and I'd hate to see them stop racing there. Uh, but that being said, man, I, I joked yesterday, no more short tracks. Let's just more mile and a half. Um, yep. but damn they're they've been the track this year. I can't, it's I'm looking funny. forward to Michigan, man. I think I'm, a, I'm excited about Michigan this year. I'm telling you what, man, it's funny how your opinions can change <laughs> just because of you, you, you get, you know, you sprinkle a little feel good. We're just never uh, damn happy is what it is. NASCAR starts getting well, rid of mile and a half and we're like, no, we want more of them. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, they finally fixed them, and right. now, you know, it's uh, yeah. I mean, the racing has been really good on them. Um, we don't get a stinker too often, Mm-mm. and you want to hang on to that. You want to hang on to that while you can. It's it's just tough, man. One thing that's worth noting here too, and I don't know how much it was, how much it affected because it certainly got washed off. Um, but they put resin down again here, which we haven't seen the resin in a while now since we switched to this new car. Um, and I'll tell you what, man, they were running against the wall at Charlotte. Yep. And yep. again, I, I, first of all, I think PJ one is dead. Let's put the PJ one yeah, away, so. but the resin seems to do a good job wherever we put it. So let's, I think we just need to keep putting that stuff down. Yep. Yep. 
Yep. I um I I was you know we've got lanes, we've got different grooves. Yeah. I think you'll see some of that at Michigan, like you said. Um, what's funny is I was looking at the schedule and we don't have a whole lot of these coming back. No. That's um, the thing is like it, the, we've gotten rid of so many mile and a halves over the yeah. last couple of years that it, I mean you go you go all the way Eric you like Atlanta used to be not right. anymore uh so you have you have Nashville I guess uh before yeah. that uh then you go all the way to Michigan then you go all the way to Kansas uh then Texas so yeah we're um towards the end of the year yeah we get Texas and and uh, Vegas and Homestead but yeah this is uh this sucks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know, I'm looking forward. You know, I like the stretch of the schedule, though, that we're in. Yeah. Um, especially with the Coke 600 being good. Ever since Kansas, we've had a really nice run here. Uh, Kansas, Darlington, uh, Charlotte. Then we go to Gateway, Sonoma, Nashville. And we're going back to the old Sonoma, thank God. Right. Um, so let's let's have some fun there. You I'm, know, yeah, I, I agree, it. but I also have a problem with the summer stretch because as somebody who – has kids and wants to take a vacation and go to a NASCAR race during the summer um, when the kids are out of school and I don't have to take them out of school to go. Uh, there's not a lot of good opportunities for mile and a half tracks. Um, well, we used to have one in our backyard then they took one away. Maybe right. they'll bring, maybe they'll give it back to us. Who yeah, knows? I doubt it yeah. very much. Um, we're going to do the Atlanta trip this summer. Um, but again, not the traditional mile and a half anymore. And that's right. Yep. Um, pretty limited on options unless you want to go sit at a road course or go across the country. Um, right. For summertime, right. so I don't know. I think we're going to see some changes next year, though. So we'll see. Yep. Um, certainly on the on the subject of, we'll talk about Indy a little bit, but I it, it really sounds like we're going to be back on the oval there next year. So um, that'll be interesting. But uh, yeah, uh, other things worth mentioning in this race. Uh, certainly some shout outs to be given here. Um, how about Kyle Busch ends up sixth place after spinning and riding halfway around the track backwards. Um, I. They haven't watched it yet, but there's a YouTube video I found today, which is just a compilation of of Kyle Busch driving backwards after spinning. So um, people forget this is not a new thing for Kyle. <laughs> yeah, Kurt used to do it too. <laughs> yeah, Kurt used to celebrate backwards. Remember that? Yeah, he used to drive that. Yeah. Well, Kyle is a Days of Thunder fan, and there's the famous scene with Cole Trickle on the 51 car driving backwards with transmission yep. problems. So I'm pretty sure that's where Kyle gets that from. Yeah, Kyle actually did a tweet a little while ago that was, uh, <laughs> of course. Uh, Calling back to that. He's, he's good at that. He's good at that. Uh, we mentioned Ricky Stenhouse Jr. having a run in with him. He finishes seventh, uh, 23 11. Uh, both top fives, uh, fourth and fifth for them. Um, Ty Dillon, or not Ty Dillon, Ty Gibbs uh, definitely needs a shout out. Ran really well in this race. Uh, finished 26, got caught up in somebody else's mess, but, uh, but terrific run for him. Um, continues to impress. I think he's going to win a race this year. I think so. I think he's going to maybe have a shot at one. Um, and if he doesn't, gonna... it, I mean, he's had such a good year without yeah. winning one right now that yep. it's just, it's been great. Yep. He's done a very good job so far. Very mature. He hasn't gotten into any, any crap. Yep. He's just been driving smart and driving well. And I, I think this is the rookie year that he needed to have. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Roush, Fenway, Keselowski, both cars ran really well. Um, Brad didn't get the finish, but certainly ran up front, uh, despite complaining about William Byron pitting. Um, and, and then, uh, Chris Buescher was able to, to step it back up at the end after being kind of non-existent through the, he, he, he won the one stage and then was non-existent through the rest of the race until the end when he managed to come up to eighth place at the end. So, yeah. um, Zane Smith gets a top 10 finish. Um, Justin Haley ran really well in this one, finished in 15th, JJ Yaley, 16th, Corey LaJoy, 17th. Um, some good runs out of some guys that maybe you don't normally expect. So, yep. And, uh, old Jimmy Johnson, second race of the season, second last place finish, James. <laughs> well, poor Jimmer. So I'm telling you, you know, Kyle Larson spun out by himself too, but nobody talks about that. Yeah. Nobody says he, nobody says he's, you know, a rusty goat. I'm telling you, man, should have, should have just stayed as team owner. There was one point in the race where legacy motor club was, uh, the three last spots on the grid. They, they, thank, yeah. Thankfully, uh, Eric Jones limped it up to 30 seconds. Right. But, uh, yeah. Other than that, it was a rough day. A yeah. uh, rough day for the for the boys at the Legacy Motor Club. Well, both the 42 and the 84 went out at pretty much the same time. Uh, well, J- Jimmy's going to Lamar. He's 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 yeah. going to be fine. He's got bigger things to <laughs> bigger things going. On. His Jimmy. average fi- his average finish right now is 35th. <laughs> oh, it's never been worse. Man, I I said I this is why I didn't want him to come back. Ah, it's fine. It's just I don't like he it. Can, 
Eric, the man can do whatever he wants. I know he can, but I, I don't... stand by. I stand by that. I don't like it. You uh, can't tarnish the legacy of seven championships. <laughs> well, I mean, you can. I mean, I watched. Not it, on the... I watched Richard Petty drive around with a towel in his mouth and and barely I... uh, make races or not make yeah. races. So, but he also got a whole season's worth of being celebrated too at the yeah, end, I even suppose. though he was out there, you know, slumming around. So. I suppose. Yep, celebrated yeah. in with provisionals. Well. <laughs> <laughs> that too that too but jimmy johnson can do what he wants i don't i'm i'm i always give him the free pass he's fine <laughs> um ty gibbs was our, was still your high, highest finishing rookie with his 26th place finish um ross chastain's your points leader one point over ryan one blaney. point yeah we mentioned that earlier i forgot about that ryan yeah. blaney's that, that's how good his season's been he's he's yep. crept up to almost first in points with this win now too so nice day 64 points on the biggest points day of the year yes Yes, sir. Nobody, nobody, nobody the rest of the season will earn that many points. So that's a pretty good day. Yes, it is. Uh, there you go. There's your Cup Series race. We finally got back through everything we went through yeah. already. We're caught up. Good job. I think shorter and more concise. Maybe we should record twice every week. Maybe we should. Let's rip no. through Xfinity and trucks and get <laughs> go to bed. Well, um, I mean, I guess it's, it's fitting that this podcast is taking us longer to record because uh, the weekend did. Uh, Justin yeah, Allgaier gets himself a win in as James coins at the 48 hours of Charlotte. Or was it more? Was it like 72 uh, hours? Of it Charlotte? was, it was a lot. A lot. Yeah. Um, 26 race win a streak snapped by Justin Allgaier. Um, uh, Dale jr. Said on his podcast today that he's happy that now Adam Alexander will stop talking about the fact that junior motorsports hasn't won this season. <laughs> um, cause he was sick of hearing it. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> 83 laps led in this one. Uh, pretty dominating performance. Only four guys led race led laps in this race. Yeah. Um, I think this is one of the rare times we can say the cup race was certainly better than the Xfinity race. Yes, uh, it was. It might have had to do with the, what, six-hour delay in the middle of the race for the cup series to run. Yes. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> And you also make sure you call Kyle Bush a coward again. Yes, I did called. We... I did call Kyle Bush a coward for bailing on running 900, 900 miles to make Justin Haley do it instead. Yep. Um. So seven seven drivers on the lead lap in this one. By yeah. the time it was all said and done, good lord. Yeah, and, and this is another one that you know we've just been waiting for it to happen. First of all, waiting for Junior Motorsports to get back in victory lane and Justin Allgaier to get another win in the Xfinity Series. Um, good win for him. Uh. Nice looking car too. I, I love the yep. patriotic paint schemes we see. Um, John Hunter Nemechek uh, leads 57 laps, finished second. Uh, Ty Gibbs also led 52 laps in this one, fi- winds up fifth. Um, Where did Parker Retzlaff come from, by the way? That was a great run for them. Yeah, he was good um, all around, just good all day. Uh, Jordan, both Jordan Anderson cars were good, man. Jeb Burton's yeah. up there. Yeah. Carson Hosevar ran well in this one, eighth Is, place finish. Yep, he had a great run. Yeah, now As he's well. now he's a Cup Series driver. Now he's a cut. Yeah, look at him go, man. So, um, I mean, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. It was uh, it was kind of the afterthought of the weekend, but um, we got, NASCAR, we got through man, it. NASCAR got every single lap of every race in this weekend. Yep, NASCAR and Fox, good work. Yeah, yeah, yep, man. Can you imagine those guys at Fox oh my working God. all day? And, and I give props to NASCAR for one too. They called the Xfinity race early. Not only that, but they postponed it till Monday so the teams could go back to the shops and work on their Portland cars on Sunday. Um, when the forecast was already bad on Sunday, it was obvious they weren't racing Sunday. Um, so just credit to NASCAR for making a smart decision, and I'm sure Fox had a lot to do with that too. Um, just all around smart. And plus, yep. I mean, you don't want to put the Xfinity race up against the Indy 500, right? I mean, no. that'd be kind of dumb. No. <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to watch that. Yeah, yeah. so... <laughs> So there you go. There's your NASCAR Xfinity Series recap. Uh, it is 20, his 20th victory for Justin Allgaier. Um, Parker Retzloff was our highest finishing rookie with a sixth place finish. And John Hunter Nemechek is your points leader by 10 points over Austin Hill in the Xfinity Series. Excellent. Uh, Camping World Truck Series actually ran on time and when they were supposed to. And uh, on the theme of winless streaks, 27 race winless streaks snapped by Ben Rhodes, who gets the win. Uh, in the camp in the Craftsman Truck Series at Charlotte, snapping on streaks all over, man. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, um, another one that was just kind of like a, it's going to happen eventually. He's got to be, he got to get it soon. Uh, I'm not surprised to see Ben Rhodes in Victory Lane. And uh, I'm trying to find the actual numbers here. Where the hell is NASCAR got the? There they are. Jeez, the results are at the end. Thirty-seven laps led for Ben Rhodes. Uh, not quite dominating because Corey Heim led more. 
uh, as did Carson Hosevar, who ran really well in this one too. Yep, Carson. Um, he's he's turning himself heater. around right now. He's. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, obviously, he's getting the look for this weekend to run in the Cup car, which probably has a lot to do with the way he's run the last yeah, four or five weeks. I mean, yep. he's just really – he got the chance in that Xfinity car, and he's just kind of really stepped up the maturity level in you know, a matter of just a few races, and it's been impressive to see, which is good because it's getting frustrated with the kid. It's, it's nice to see him doing what he should be doing. So, Yep, absolutely. Uh, there you go. That's our – our recap from Charlotte uh, over the weekend. Um, I don't think I have anything to add there. Uh, we, no. new, on the news, uh, we talked about the Chase Elliott situation, so nothing really to talk about there. Uh, Indy 500 on Sunday, Joseph Newgarden gets his first Indianapolis 500 victory. Um, but I wanted to talk about the finish, James, because NASCAR or IndyCar kind of pulled a NASCAR um, and red flagged the race with two laps to go, parked the cars on pit road, and then pulled off a of pit road, came around to get uh, get the green flag and the white flag to run one lap, a one lap shootout <laughs> yep. to finish this race. This was after multiple restarts at the end uh, where we saw several crashes, very similar to a NASCAR race. Um, what were your thoughts? I, I don't I don't know how much of the Indy 500 you got to watch, if any. Yeah, I was I was traveling, so I didn't watch a whole lot of it, but I was listening to it. Um, yeah, and we've seen F1 do this, too. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, NASCAR's influence on... <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing up the ends of races, I guess. Uh, it's exciting, yeah. I guess. Uh, and if you're like me and you you only watch a handful of IndyCar uh, races a year, I guess. Uh, I mean, what do you? I don't know what do you say. I mean, it's exciting. Um, I don't think IndyCar would be would be doing that five five years ago. No. But here's no. the thing with me with IndyCar is I want IndyCar to get over this this whole the Indy 500 is a pure, pure event. It's, it's purity and we need to, you know, be traditional oh, and blah, blah, sounds blah. Like, uh, sounds like F1 does that. Yeah. It's like, okay, you guys have run the course on that. That is over with. And, and IndyCar can sit there and stand on its high horse all at once about being, you know, the pure form of motorsports, but they have pushed to pass. They've got, you know, different tire combinations. They did side by side restarts for a while They've mm-hmm. they've pulled off all the stops and all the gimmicks that NASCAR has done for the most part, other than stages, other than green white checkers and in, in overtime. Um, fans want to see a green flag finish, and I don't have any problem with what they did here. Um, I guess if I was Marcus Erickson, I'd be pretty pissed too. Um, yep. But you know, I think they gave everybody those those drivers up front a fair shot uh, to to make a run for it, and obviously New, Newgarden was in the better position, being second on the back stretch. Um, around the last lap, that's where you want to be at Indy. But, um, you know, Dale, Dale Jr. talked today about that. He didn't, he didn't like the way it felt or the way it was. And he thought maybe they should stop counting caution laps in like the last 10 laps, of the Indy 500 or something like that. But he doesn't think they should do green, white checkers. And it's like, it's the same damn thing, Dale. Like, yeah, it is. It's it, there's same. no difference, but yeah. I, I think this, this whole finishing under caution stuff, it's run its course. I'm sorry. It's sports entertainment, and whether you whether you get icky over that statement because of WWE or not, um, that's what this is. We are in an entertainment um, industry, and yep. if you're not going to entertain the fans, if you're not going to give them a good finish, they're going to leave unhappy. And so you need to give them a shot to race to the green or race to the checkers under green. I think they did that uh, under the circumstances, and I really wish, and I know they won't, but I really wish IndyCar would step up and make the decision to – adopt an overtime procedure or something to guarantee this race finishes under green or at least get, guarantee yep. a shot at it. You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm in agreement with that. Um, it's, it's tough, man. I think India Indy is so dangerous. It's the one yeah. thing that gives me pause, you know? I mean, we saw it. I agree. Firsthand. Yeah. It's, it's super. I mean, it's just a super, I know we were talking really about how dangerous NASCAR is with some of these wrecks, but IndyCar man is such a dangerous, I don't know. I mean, the, what the, what those guys are doing there and the speeds that they're running, um, it it scares me. But we watching still it. we still start them three wide on a start. We certainly do. You know, yes, we certainly do. I mean, so I don't, I don't, I don't buy the whole that it's more dangerous on the last lap than it is with two to go. And I agree. And we still we yeah, run the last lap no anyway. If there's not a caution, so I don't, yeah. I, I don't. It just to me, it doesn't make it's a difference. hard. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard, Eric, because I, you know, I don't know if I like a, the idea of a green-white checkers for Indy because of, of that, because you're you're just, you're loading the gun with more bullets, you know, and it's it's just, it seems, it seems wrong in IndyCar for some reason, but I agree we should be entering, you know, we should Nothing be Nothing sucks more than there. spending three hours watching something. Oh, my God. There's, there's a reason the yes. hockey doesn't end in a tie anymore. You know what I mean? Yes, like, that's right. Yep. You don't want to sit there to see not a conclusion. Um, yep. But anyway, yep. Uh, very like another popular win. Um, obviously, Joseph Newgarden's an American, too, which was cool to see. Um, real great celebration runs up in the crowd and kind of influences the celebrations of the, the two, uh, the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series uh, races as well. Um, yep. But just all around awesome emotion out of him and, and a, and a great win. Cool to see. So yep, the Indy 500 did not disappoint. No. And the ratings were up again and it yep. seems to be the, seems to be gain, gain the momentum is one of the most popular events in the, in the country, you know, yeah. um, every year it's, it's not going away now, uh, which is really good. IndyCar was in a pretty bad spot not that long ago. And it's uh, this, you know, it's, it's a once a year sport for the most part, but, uh, it's really big when it goes, so yeah. that's that's really good to see. Yeah, we'll see if there's 350,000 people in Detroit this weekend when they race on the streets. That's exactly right. Um, that being said, 350,000 people, 300 and what, 20,000 of those people are there to watch the race. The other 30,000 are in the snake pit. <laughs> <laughs> so... Well, wait till I wait till I get to my shout outs because I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the snake pit. Nice, nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think there's any other news. I mean, I've been checking. We're good with, yeah. uh, with the, the old Chase Elliott situation. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Props to NASCAR. Oh, one other thing I, I'd like to bring up. Um, first of all, props to NASCAR for making a decision this early in the week, especially when we raced on Monday, um, not making us wait till Wednesday or Thursday to find out. But so during the race, uh, I forget who it was, but they lost a, they had a wheel go out of, out of the pit stall, um, during the IndyCar race and IndyCar during the race assessed a monetary fine and did not penalize and did not penalize the driver with a pass through penalty. And I thought, how great is that? Like, why cannot, why can't NASCAR have a couple people in the tower that their responsibility is to assess these penalties? And then we know before we leave the track, before the race is even over, that Chase Elliott's getting more than what he got, you know, or, or they're parking him for the day, even though he parked himself because his car was wrecked. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. I'd love, I still, you know, NASCAR went on that whole spiel that we're going to, you're going to know who the winner was and you're going to know the final results when we leave the track. And now we're back to announcing penalties on Tuesday and Thursday or Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. Um, it just it did, frustrates me. They did get one penalty the day after, which is Today it was pretty fast for them, yeah. so I guess I guess we got that. Yeah, I'm uh, super happy. They have with no the choice though. Was, I mean, it's yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they had no choice. They had to get it in today. And uh, kudos to Hendrick for not appealing it yes. because there's not much to say. No, <laughs> you know, no, there's nothing. It's, what's done, what's done is done. So now, if you're if you're Chase now, do you do you admit it? Because I mean, you already got penalized, so you say, yeah, I got him. Uh, he won't. No, I know he won't. No, but. he'll. He'll cre- he'll creep back into his uh, vanilla ice cream box and. <laughs> you know what the big I... question is, James. The big question yeah. is how much does NASCAR spend on sponsored posts? Oh, I already retweeted it. <laughs> I already I've already been on it. They're they're gonna have promoted the promoted tweets scheduling that he's back in Sonoma. Don't you worry. The happiest person about Chase Elliott getting suspended is Elon because Elon's gonna make some money off of it. Yes, he will. NASCAR is going to be ready to go. Yeah, there's a good tweet. I retweeted it earlier. There's a good nice. tweet about it. Yeah. Nice. Uh, well, there you go. We leave uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway in the dust, and uh, the, we're going to split this week. Uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series goes to Portland uh, for the road course, uh, and uh, where if it rains, we're okay with that. And uh, NAS- the Cup Series and Truck Series are going to Worldwide Technology Raceway at Gateway, um, where the weather is supposed to be good. Uh, so there we go. Um, so we get to preview our, the week, uh, James, you and I tied in points this week. Um, somehow with, we haven't had that happen yet this year. Yeah. Chris Buescher and Kyle Busch. Yeah, you you didn't lose. I so did not lose. I, but I did you have a three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We stay at one ninety three. When, yep. uh, when Chris Buescher won that second stage, I'm like, oh man, this, it's going to happen. And, uh, and yeah, then I wasn't too disappointed in my rowdy pick, although I missed out on uh, William Byron. I could have yeah pulled 55 so that's okay 
I'm saving him for I'm saving him for a rainy day. I've got a good I've got a good spot for for old Bill. There you go. Um, so I, as I said last week, have gone through and made my picks for the rest of the regular season already. I, there is there is possibility of some variation because obviously if there's something that really stands out to me, um, I'm gonna jump on them. But I did some research for these and based this on actual results, and uh, yeah. it just kind of it kind of plays into the fact that he did so well this weekend. And uh, James, give me old Ryan Blaney as my pick. Oh, for YRB. There you Ryan go. Blaney. Have I used Ryan Blaney yet this year? I'm curious. Uh, you have not. I have not. Yeah, I've got a few in the can. I've got a few in the cannon still. I'm going to make a little bit of a strategy play here. Okay. Um, this has got to be the best opportunity I have to use this guy, and I can keep some other drivers on my uh, on my uh, my list of, of usable drivers. Uh, give me Corey LaJoy here. Nice, that's a good one. This, actually. Yeah, this might be. Uh, now you've used him already. Yes, you I couldn't have. use him here. Uh, yep. So I'll take I'll take Corey um, when while he's in the nine car. Probably not a winning move, but maybe he'll you know maybe he'll score some points for me here. This has got to be one of his best opportunities of the season. Yeah, I'd really love it if it was at a better track. Um, yeah, I know. Like if it was at Atlanta or yeah. um, you know, a place where he could legit have a shot even, to win, but even if it was just a mile and a half and not I mean, Gateway's yeah. so tough to decide how well he's gonna do based on other performance, yeah. you know. So Yeah, and this is I you know, I'll fully admit this is a little bit of a sandbag move out of out of me because I kind of have this I have this lead here and I, I can you know, I wanted to use Joey, I wanted to use heck, I even thought about Chase Briscoe here. Um, but I've got some, I've got some good drivers and I'd like to, I'd like to hang on to him here just a little bit longer and, and use them, uh, towards the end of the regular season here. So this might be a good opportunity to, to maybe have a good day and get out of there with maybe 30 points. I'd be really happy with that. So, yeah, I think, I think it's a great play. I didn't even think about it. This is excellent play. Um, obviously I couldn't make it, but, um, I wasn't expecting that one. That's a good one. Um, yeah, I'm yep. impressed. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm trying to win this damn thing. You've right. kicked my ass so many years in a row. I know. Well, you got a pretty good head start, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, I did. How'd uh, how'd fantasy go this week, James? Uh, well, we have a back-to-back -back winner. Um, my brother-in-law, Mike, nice. <laughs> he did it again. He so I looked this up. Uh, we had we have four four races this year where we're 200 points and under. Um, and he's won three of them. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if that's like taking, uh, taking advantage of the opportunity or uh, if it's just, Hey, when, when the scores are low, he's going to win. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, he gets the win. Um, his, uh, he's fast to the grass. So 200 points for him. Green eggs and Hamlin was second and team Justin was third. I think the Larson wreck screwed up everybody yeah. at one point, because I think a lot of us all had him. Um, last week so overall standings not much of a change baron speedway is still top 100 overall nice um i beat him by i think seven points this week so i'll take <laughs> it <laughs> uh tandem draft tone is second and mickey elliott third i am i'm in fourth uh rangers fifth and eric you tumbled just a little bit you're down to seventh so yeah, yeah we've i was got uh i was doing pretty rough throughout the race so it was it was not yeah. a good day yeah we're all still we're all still battling for second right so oh, yeah for sure yeah yeah but there you go. There's uh, there's your fantasy update. There you go. Um, any shout outs this week, James? Yeah, I got a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On the uh, on the uh, website, Twitter dot com. Uh, if you go to it, at Indy 500 picks. Yes. Uh, just have a field day. Lots of fun. Lots of fun videos and photos on at Indy 500 picks. Don't do it at work. Yes. I discovered that uh, this weekend as well. And it <laughs> I remember it from last year and it was it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I forget who it was that I saw tweet it out this weekend. It's like, how have they gone this long without finding this? Um, oh, but it's, man. It is a treasure. <laughs> it really is what race weekends are like. It's not yeah. just indie that it's not just indie that is like that. It's yeah. it's my experiences at the track as well. Yeah. To me, like indie Indianapolis five hundred feels like prestige to me. It feels like you know, it feels like a Kentucky Derby type thing. Um, you know, Roger Penske's got this beautiful track and it's super clean and all this, but you forget that Indy is full of um, redneck fans <laughs> and, oh, uh, God. and, and college kids. And yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Indy 500 picks is uh wow. Wow. It, yeah. What a joy. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like right. the scene at Walmart. Um, a lot, a lot of people passed out laying in grass. <laughs> right. um, yeah. I saw a, a pretty good, 
um, acrobatic move by a woman on a on a railing in one of the walkways that was pretty ah uh, yes so. yeah she does that every year I think okay. for them yeah yeah <laughs> yeah there's yeah. So, uh, yeah there's that one um, there's uh, there's the inflatable we'll just leave it at that <laughs> on the where the national anthem's going yes uh, there's uh, the guy dressed as uh, as a Cheeto on there um, i'm trying to think let's put you it know, this so- way if you've enjoyed talladega tweeting out the things they find after the talladega races in the infield um you will love this gallery or this yeah this, this is good this, this is, is just way you, better than talladega if you want to kill 20 minutes this is how you do it and yes. then uh yeah that was that was my big shot and you know speaking of the indy 500 Derek winner our, our buddy Derek. yes uh, wasn't very far from the tire flying off, yeah. uh, the, which was the first thing I thought of when it flew off. Yeah. We didn't talk about um, that at all, but yeah, scary glad that, for sure. yeah, glad he's okay. He said he was within 200 feet of it. So that Indy uh, star photo that they have of the close up of the tire and all the fans looking at it and ducking. Yeah, I think he's in that, he's in that picture. I would, I would assume or oh close gosh. to it. So yeah, I can't even crazy. imagine. I can't even imagine. Well, Eric, we, we lived through this with Indy car before, yeah. um, famously at Michigan. Yep. Uh, we had people die from something I like that. I will you say know, it was I mean, actually it's... it was actually cart at Michigan. Yes, by the time. Yes. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Indy, Indy different Car different did, era. IndyCar did have an incident at Charlotte though that was similar. Um, yes. But yep. yeah, yeah, definitely. And and I yep. mean, they're the one at Michigan is responsible for Michigan and many other tracks getting a much lo- yep. taller catch fence um, yep. and one that goes way out over the track. I mean, if you look at Michigan, if you're sitting in the stands at Michigan, that catch fence goes halfway across the track. Yeah, it's big. Yep. And and still, I mean, stuff like this happens. Indy's got a big catch fence, but I'm so thankful that that thing went between the buildings and the stands. Um, and sorry for Snowball, the car that got hit. But um, she did get to come and kiss the bricks, the owner of the car. So, Oh, yeah. Good for her. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. Hey, man, I'd take it. Yeah. Um, I got a few shout-outs, James. Uh, I kind of already did this one, but I'll, I'll repeat it. Um, NASCAR, horrible weekend weather-wise. Uh, and they got in every single lap of all four series this weekend, including the ARCA series. So all four series gets every lap in uh, over the course of three days. So good job uh, by NASCAR for getting that done. Um, I wanted to shout out Clint Boyer for calling out Kyle, or, uh, uh, um, Chase Elliott when the incident happened and immediately saying that was intentional. And Mike Joy <laughs> backpedaling going, well, I don't know. And then Clint going, going no, <laughs> that was intentional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to- Tony even was like, uh, yeah. yeah, that was intentional. <laughs> I give yeah. Clint a lot of credit. He and Dale Jr. talks about that on he his knows. podcast this week. He knows. He, Clint is, that's a big sword to fall on for these past drivers because they're friends with these guys. They know these guys. And yep. these guys are going to be pissed at them when they make, when they do something like this. Um, so, I mean, I guarantee you, Chase Elliott is absolutely ticked off at, Clint Boyer and probably won't talk to him for a bit as a result of this, but Clint called it how it is and that's how they should do it. So um, got to yep. give credit where, where it's due for these guys when they're, when they're in these anal- analysis roles, because not everybody does it and it's good to see um, Clint yep. doing Call it. Call him like you see him, man. That's what you're paid to do. Yep. Uh, and lastly, James, I don't know if you were able to catch the absolute best moment of the weekend, but it was during the rain delay for the NASCAR Xfinity series when oh, no. race hub decided to give a microphone to Carson Hosevar. Oh boy. And Carson went through the garage and interviewed people. And it was what the grid walk should be because it was. Oh, my God. Damn funny. It was so yeah. good. It was 20 minutes. Second of week in a row. He's getting a shout out. My he's gotten a shout God, out. It was so good. It was TV gold. And for those folks at Fox who probably were so tired of coming up with rain fill to get to have Carson host of our waste 20 minutes of their time um, or, or not waste it because it was it was excellent television. Um, yep. <laughs> good on Carson. He, he, man, I, again, kid, he's making a name for himself, trying to give, get his personality out there. He's and, got, yeah, he's got the, he has got the it factor. Yeah. He can clean, if you can clean it up and yep. hone in on his skill set just a little bit, he's yep. going to be just fine. Yeah. He's a, he's a future cup series star. If he can, if he can get things reined in. Good. He's in the Noah Gregson. Yeah. Uh, bloodline. Yep. For me. Yep. Yep. Agreed. hundred yep. percent. Yep. Uh, any black flags for you this week, James? Just racing in F1. <laughs> yeah. I mean, good God. I know, like, you can, you can never stop going to Monaco. I'm not going to say that. You got to go there. 
But my God. I mean, Max Verstappen just gets out to a 25 well, second lead. I was going to say it's just over. I was going to say when we were recapping races, I forgot about Monaco. I was going to say, you know, congratulations to Max Verstappen for winning the Monaco Grand Prix on Saturday during qualifying. That was an incredible lap to watch. <laughs> I mean, that, that honest to God, that was the best part of the whole weekend. Everything else is just, it's Dude, just a parade. You will never see me not be amazed at an onboard shot of a car going around that place at speed. That's incredible. No, it's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. They, they can't race there. They just can't race, which is fine. I mean,. I have the yeah. Formula One game, and I can't make it a lap around. No, nope, I am no, I yes, I know your struggle. I have, <laughs> I have finished a race there. I've never won a race there. Uh, that's as far, uh, far as I got in F one twenty two. I could not. I've I finished not, a couple, but without the re, the reset, I wouldn't be able to. I do finished. It. Yep, I finished in seventh. Uh, was my best. I think that was my best finish. So. Uh, I was really, really proud of that too. I, I dominated that season, and that was my worst finish of the year. But by God, I was, I was proud of that race. I usually, I even with the reset, I usually crash out because I'm finally like, just screw it, I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah, want to do it a, anymore. My buddy and I, we had a connected career in F122, and we both qualified. I think I qualified on the pole, <laughs> and I was like, finally, I'm like, I got this. I can lead the parade around Monaco. And I think I crashed out. Uh, somebody, I think Checo, Checo definitely <laughs> took me out. I was pretty pissed at him about it. He was my teammate too, so I was, uh, yeah, I was pretty pissed at him. I did see somebody posted a video of the, if it, when they come, I don't remember what the turns are called. But the the after they come out of the hairpin, they come down and they turn right and go through the tunnel, right? Yeah. There's a road there that they could turn left on and run a stretch down and then do a hairpin and come back. That would add a passing zone to that track. Mm. And man, I'd love to see them explore that because they need something there, man. I, I get yeah. the prestige of it. Uh, it's a race that needs to be on the schedule. Man, does it suck. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's man. you pretty much watch the start. Yeah. And it's, if there's not a pass going into turn one, the race is over. Yep. So, but I watched yep. it. I watched the whole thing, James. I watched every lap of racing this weekend between Arca, the cup series, the Xfinity series, the truck series. And I give you a lot of credit. F1 man. and IndyCar. I give you a lot of credit. That's yeah. crazy. Yep. So good yeah. work. I, I spent my evening watching uh, two full hours of uh, <laughs> succession and Barry on HBO because it was two series finales of my favorite shows at the same night. It was nice. terrible. So happy and that they rescheduled. Huh? Yes, I was. I was <laughs> happy that the, I didn't have the 600 on at the same time. Cause I was locked in to HBO. <laughs> nice. Uh, so now I'm, you know, most people down. just watch stuff delayed now, right? James. Yeah, but it's the series finales. I couldn't, I couldn't let my two favorite shows get spoiled. <laughs> Like Succession and Barry are two of my favorite shows of all time, so I had to I had to lock in, hmm. and I knocked it out, man. I was in bed by midnight, but I was I was I was I was happy. There so. you go. Uh, yep. My black flag, James. You know where it's going. Go for it, man. Dawsonville Do it. pool room, man. Oh boy, Dawsonville so... pool room. <laughs> so Dawsonville yeah, pool room. They got was very opinionated this week about the Chase Elliott incident. And uh, I just had to point out to the Dawsonville pool room that Chase Elliott doesn't even freaking go to the Dawsonville pool room. The guy who told you that he saw him eating a burger there was my favorite. That was <laughs> right. my favorite one. It's like yeah. Chase doesn't give a crap about the pool That's room. That's funny, Eric. I was in there eating a burger and right. Chase Elliott was sitting at the bar. Sure you Yeah, were. sure he was. It was you a cardboard bot. cutout, you dummy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that person was just a bot anyway. Uh, who cares? Yeah. Come on. At first, I mean, you're a freaking bar. You're not even relevant. I told Shut up. I told you what to do, didn't I? Yeah, go in there and eat. Go there. eat there yeah. when you when you go down there. You go. Yeah. Go to the how, far, pool how far room. is Dawsonville from uh, Atlanta? Oh, I don't know. Because I think we're flying sure. in, so I won't be driving through a lot of Georgia. Yeah, you should. But... You should definitely try to go there if yeah. you can. Go in there and leave them a tip. <laughs> <laughs> screw screw your the Twitter pool account. room. Yeah. <sighs> this is so funny when you. I when I saw that I was like, damn, Eric went after the Dawsonville pool room. <laughs> I was so annoyed, and then I get a reply from him. So yeah, put it on the board, James. Put it on the board. Oh, I did, <laughs> I did. You pissed off the Dawsonville pool room. I, I definitely count. I, I count that in our game, man. Yeah, That's, that was a good one. Ah, <sighs> good stuff. Good stuff. All right, James. Where can people find you on social media if they want to hit you up during the week? <laughs> at James Kosh on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at the Dawsonville pool. No, at, at T Super Speedway on Twitter. Uh, you can find the fo- uh, podcast on Facebook at facebook.com slash the super speedway. Our website is the super speedway.com. Uh, you can find the podcast on Apple podcast, Spotify, Google play and anchor uh, subscribe for new episodes each week. And if you go to anchor.fm slash the super speedway, you can leave us an audio message and we might play it on the show, especially if you have something bad to say about the Dawsonville pool room. Uh, NASCAR is out of Charlotte. We're heading two directions uh, opposite side of the country. Just about, 
uh, this week as we go to Gateway uh, for the Cup Series and the Truck Series. And Portland for the Xfinity Series. We'll be back next weekend to break it all down and get you guys ready for Sonoma and the return of Chase Elliott. Can't wait. Until then, everybody, (laughs) let's go racing. It finally happened. Oh, it finally happened. 281 episodes, and I finally forgot to hit record. <laughs> the, 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 you've had a day, so oh, we should have known. It's been a day. Holy hell.